Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and looks like we've got a geometry word problem. Pretty typical. Let's take a look. Jack is flying a kite using 42 meters of string and they labeled it here for us. So we can see that the string of the kite here is labeled 42. I don't know what's wrong with my pencil. There we go. Whoa. So my string on my kite here is 42. Uh, his friend Roberto is standing 27 meters away from him. And again, they labeled that for us. 27 meters uh, directly under the kite. And then they say to the nearest foot, high, how high above Robert, Roberto is the kite flying? So they're asking us to find this measurement here. How high up above Roberto's head the kite is. So. Um, this is a pretty simple problem if you recognize the fact that these two gentlemen and the kite make a right triangle. We can see that the three points here make this right triangle. And what do we have here? Well, we've been given two of the sides of a right triangle and we're looking for the third. Okay, so we've got a formula for that. There is a formula that relates the three sides of a right triangle. It's known as the Pythagorean theorem. Again, it would be useful to use when you know two sides and you want to find the third side of a right triangle. The Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's a relationship between the three sides. And they tell us you should know, write this on your formula sheet, because this formula is on your formula sheet. If you don't already know, you should know that a and b are the legs of the triangle, uh, meaning that they form the right angle. See how it makes like a capital L? That's how I remember legs. And then the side directly across from the right angle is C. And as long as you can remember that, you won't screw up the Pythagorean theorem. So even though this is a geometry problem, we can use algebra to solve it. Anytime we get a formula, we're using algebra to solve. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to plug in what I know. As I always do with an algebraic formula, first I write the formula. Then I do the lovely substitution step where I plug in the information I know. Now take a look here. If I look at my legs, one of my legs is known, the 27, but the other leg is unknown. Um, those are the two around, again, around the right angle, so I know they're the legs. So it doesn't matter which one you call A and which one you call B. I'll pretend like A is the unknown, and I'll plug 27 in for B. The legs are interchangeable, so don't worry about which one's A and which one's B. But the part that really, really matters is C. Make sure that you always choose the side across from the right angle to be C. So I'm going to plug 42 in for C, and that's being squared. So once again, A is what I'm looking for. I don't change squares. I don't change operations like plus. I did uh, change my B into a 27, and I changed my C into a 42. I just did my substitution step. I plugged in the known values. Now, a really good thing to know in algebra is that it's wise, it's not necessary. Sometimes we can go other ways. Sometimes there's more than one way in math. But it's wise to simplify before you solve. And that'll be the general rule of thumb that I uh, follow when I solve complicated equations. I'm gonna simplify before I solve. I'm gonna do any forwards math that I know how to do before I start uh, moving backwards, getting rid of things. So. Squaring 27 and squaring 42 are math I know how to do. And you can even do this in your TI. X, you can press 27 and then the X squared button and it'll do the math for you. But since I forgot my TI, I'm just going to do it in side work. I'm going to multiply 27 by 27 because that's what it means to square. It's to multiply a number by itself. So 7 times 7 is 49. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That's 189. I'm multiplying by 20, not 2, so I'll put a 0 there. 2 times 7 is 14, and 5, and I get 9, 12, 7, 29. So I'm going to write 7, 29 right under 27 squared because it's equivalent. Now, a squared, I don't know how to simplify because I don't know what the heck a is. I can't currently do this addition, so I'll leave it there, but I sure can square 42. Again, I would rather do it in my TI, and if you did this on the GED, you would have your calculator, but since I forgot to grab mine, I'm stuck doing it the old-fashioned way. So, 8 and 16. And I get 17 
64. I am going to have to pause and pick up a calculator in just a second because my math is about to get funky. Let me show you what I mean. I am done simplifying. There's no more math I can do forwards. The only two operations I see here are squaring, but how can I square a letter when I don't know what the letter represents? And adding, but similarly, how could I add to a letter when I don't know what the letter represents? So I can't do any of this math, so now I'm gonna start solving. I'm gonna start undoing math. Instead of adding the 729, I'll do the opposite. I'll take 729 away from both sides of my equation. And I really do want my calculator now, so let me go grab it. Okay, so I'm going to, on the left-hand side, adding 729 and subtracting 729 will cancel, leaving me with just a squared, and a squared is equal to, and I take 1,764, and from it I subtract 729. That's the math to do, and again, if you had this on your GED, you would have a calculator. Okay, now almost done, almost done. Um, I just need my A to be alone. And the only thing left with A is this little floating two, the square, the power or exponent two. Uh, in order to get rid of a square, I have to do the opposite of square. So let's remember the opposite of addition is subtraction. The opposite of multiplication is division. But the opposite of square, that's square root. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Again, in algebra, when I want to make a change, I need to do it to both sides. So on the left-hand side, my square and square root cancel so that my A is alone. And on the right-hand side, there's the math to do. And this is why I went to pick up my calculator. I definitely want a calculator for this. And um, a hint, when you're using your GED calculator to do a square root, you need to make sure that you're in classic mode. So hit the mode button on, the G on your GED calculator arrow down using your arrow button that has all the arrows arrow down over the word classic and then hit enter and then that'll be selecting classic mode then once you've done done that we want to get out of that mode screen so you're going to press clear great and now that you've done that now you're prepared to take the square root um, of 1035 and what you're going to do is you're going to hit I need some space to write. I've written all over this because I was doing scratch work here. So what you're going to um, type in your calculator is you're going to type the second button because the square root symbol is actually in green. Anytime you want something green, you have to hit the second button. And then you'll hit that x squared button that has the little square root over it. And then you'll type in 1,035 and press enter. It's like a job in and of itself just to learn how to use a GED calculator. So I'm gonna do it now instead of just talk about it. So let me take the square root of 1,035. Square root of 1,035 and, oops, I did definitely did that wrong. I know it was wrong because it was too big. I got 100 and something. I said something went wrong. I shouldn't be getting something that big. So a square root of 1,035, there we go. I got this number, 32.17141, yada, yada, yada. So that is A, the missing side. So that's how high the kite is above his head. Uh, careful though, when you get these decimal problems, you'll often have rounding instructions. And indeed, I do see rounding instructions in my problem here. It says to the nearest foot. Anytime it's to the nearest unit, I don't care if it's a yard, an inch, a meter, you're gonna cut it off right at the decimal place. So I'll cut my 32 right at the decimal place. I'll consider the next number, the one I'm about to throw away and ask myself if I'm halfway through my digit system. I'm less than five, so I'm not halfway. I'll just ignore all the rest of this as if it doesn't matter and say that that kite is about 32 feet over his head. Tricky application of the Pythagorean theorem. Definitely fair game. Uh, for your GED. Um, if you have any questions about this or any other GED uh, topic, drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.